today I am going to create a Mega Man Amiglo. Supplies, what you need, some sort of drill. Using a power drill takes a lot of practice. Um, there are a selection of drill bits, 30 gauge wire, super glue. I've been using Loctite, it's got a nice little fine tip that I can use. An X Acto knife that I've got the scalpel attachment on. Box cutter, a wire stripper, needle nose pliers with wire cutters, soldering iron, solder, soldering iron stand, and a cell phone toolkit. Possibly some sandpaper. Other things you'll need are your 3mm LEDs. For this one, the customer asked for green. And of course, your Amiibo. I am going to cut this one open in a way that it can be resealed. Even though the box is not perfectly mint, it's pretty close. So I'm going to open this up. First by cutting on the bottom. There's a little separation here, and I use the exact knife for this, and I just cut along the separation gently until I can basically pull gently, and yes, it tears a little bit. You gotta be kind of gentle with this part. You pull it until you reach the top of the plastic. Then you can pull Mega Man out, just like that. The box is intact, and Mega Man is out. The customer wants me to reseal it, so I'm going to pull this little sticker on the bottom off so that he can be scanned while he's still in the box. Um, I think they're planning on opening it anyway, but just in case they decide not to. Just pull this little sticker off and you are able to reseal them in the box. And he may or may not light up. Some figures are actually a little closer to the bottom of the box than others. So I added a couple things to you that you need. Uh, Elmer's glue to reseal into the original box and I've got the LEDs out as well now. I actually have a special tool that I ended up making um, to pry the amiibo off of the base. I'm not going to use that because it's kind of like my one trade secret. With Mega Man, sometimes he's easy to pull apart, sometimes he's not. So, you just kind of start wiggling. The first thing you do is you kind of bend the Mega Man back and forth. And this particular one is going to be a pain, I can tell. Because it is not coming off that base easily. Usually you'll start hearing some like pops here and there, like I just heard one, but in this case when you're not hearing any pops or anything like that, I usually will heat it up with the heat tool just a little bit, um, and I'll show you kind of how I do that, so I just kind of do this. You basically want to make it so the plastic's a little warm to the touch, but not too warm. And then go back to wiggling again. Hopefully it'll pop out, but this one's going to be a real pain, I think. I'm going to actually stop the video and do this off screen, and then I'll start the video back up once I've got it popped off. So, unfortunately, my camera cut out through about half the video, and I'm already pretty far along. So, we're going to act as if I have not done almost anything to this thing. So after you heat it up, um, it took me about 10 minutes of wiggling to finally get it so that Mega Man came out of the stand like that. And once he's out, I showed you how to pry the base apart. And I used this. And I put this tool in at the point where the feet attach to the base. And I put it where the feet covered up the edge. So that, in case I did mess up, you wouldn't be able to see the scuff marks from this. I shoved this in between, and then pried upwards, and and about three points. I wound up doing it at the point of this foot, at the point of this foot, and then one behind. And usually I'll go at the top of the little mark there, um, so like right about there. So I ended up prying in three points before I got this separated, once it was separated. I just used the X-Acto blade, which is over here, to lift up gently on the NFC chip until it came out. And just like that, it was out. And I usually put it back in the black piece from the base and then leave that there until I'm done with the rest of the figure. 
Then I worked on prying his foot off of uh, the figure itself, and I wound up heating it back up again with the heat gun, and then I used the flathead screwdriver from the cell phone repair kit, and I gently pushed it between the leg and the boot, and I didn't pry, I just put it down in there to separate the leg from the boot. And then eventually I was able to pull it off, and the leg actually ended up snapping off, but that's okay because we're going to drill through the boot and through the leg, and we're going to cut that leg off partially as well um, so that it fits in properly later, and then we glue it back together. And then I had started working on separating the arm from the cannon, and basically heated that up, bent it, and then what ended up happening is once I got it so it was out a little bit, I was bending it down, and I was actually using the X-Acto blade to cut through the plastic of the arm because we're not going to use the arm. We're just using the cannon. And now that it's exposed, I'm going to make one more cut. And there we go. And now the cannon is off of his arm. And that's all the disassembly we're going to have to do on Mega Man. Now it's time to start drilling. So. Um, I always start with the smallest bit I've got, which is the 1 16th. We'll start by working on the arm first. But for most of you at home, I really suggest not using a power drill. It's really easy to mess things up, especially if you've never done it before. I always start with the cannon by drilling through the point as close to the center as possible. So now that I've got a little tiny hole started, Perfect. I can just go ahead and there we go. You saw it kind of probably saw it pop in. It's because inside the arm is, or the cannon is actually a little bit hollow. We're through with the 116th. So pull that out. You should be able to blow through the pieces to make sure that there's actually airflow all the way through it. If there's not, that means you need to drill further. Looks like I'm going to use a 1 8th bit to drill through the rest of the way and expand the hole to the size I need. There we go. So I drilled through with the 1 8 bit. There's still quite a bit of the arm stuck inside this. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to take the 1 8 bit off. I'm going to find the bit that fits this arm. And if you aren't comfortable using the drill and you think you might cut through, you can use the X-Acto knife and just kind of hollow out some of that excess arm plastic that's still inside, which is what I'm doing now. By the way, I don't condone doing this without adult supervision if you're under 18. And even if you are 18, still be careful because I've cut the crap out of my hand before. And I'm using, I'm pulling on the arm piece that I'm just going to end up throwing away. I'm not actually pulling on the piece I'm using at all. I'm not touching it in the slightest. There we go. And I actually got more of it out than I was expecting to, which is good. So we are going to use the 3 16 bit and drill through, now that we've got most of the arm out of there, just to slowly drill out the excess plastic. Perfect. So, that's hollowed out. Oh, I'm going to cut off the arm um, about halfway through the elbow so that it is actually going to be flush. Never force anything with an X-Acto knife. Um, it's a good way to cut yourself. And there it is. So now it's flush. My camera keeps dying, unfortunately, so what ended up happening is I finished drilling the cannon and when you blow through it you should hear like a kind of whistling sound so you know for sure that you've drilled through it. Next thing I did is I worked on the boot. Um, on the bottom side of the boot the two pegs that go into the gold stand um, one is kind of trapezoidal shaped and one is rectangular. You're going to drill into the trapezoidal one and I used a 1 8 bit to do it. You should always drill the pilot hole with your smallest bit possible, like the 1 16th. And I drilled through that from the bottom up through the top of the boot. 
Once I drilled my pilot hole, I then used the 1 8 bit and drilled up through that until it was cleared out um, to the point where I needed it to be. Then I used the X-Acto blade and I cut off the pegs that go back down into the gold base about halfway. Um, what that does is it allows me to guarantee that I can get the boot all the way in to the base. There we go. Is insert it back into the base and I can, when I glue it back down, I can push down and that way there's no gaps or anything and I don't have to worry about the, uh, the boot. Um, there's construction going on in the apartment below me, unfortunately, so you'll hear some hammering and maybe some jingling from my dog's collar. I drilled my hole through the boot, through the cannon, now through the body, and I'm going to go with a 332nd bit to drill the hole through the body. What you can do is, if you go from the bottom of his foot, or bottom of his leg, directly to his shoulder, you can make a straight line, and the cool thing about it is you can use the, or measure your drill bit beforehand to go exactly the depth that you need to go so you can just push the drill all the way through as far as you need to go. As long as you keep it angled properly, you won't have any issues of it poking through. For you guys at home, always drill the pilot hole using that 1 16th bit. So you might see me drill a little bit and then pull out, drill a little bit, pull out. I'm doing that because uh, the plastic sometimes doesn't come out when I'm drilling, and as a result, what ends up happening is it uh, kind of jams down in there and makes it harder to drill through. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go through his arm and do the same thing. And I'm going to try to stop right where the two holes meet. And then what I can do is use that flathead screwdriver just to make sure. And that's pretty much it for that. So now I've got all my holes drilled. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up, we've got our holes drilled. And I'm sorry that this video kind of sucks because I know it's zoomed out and on screen it's probably not particularly good. I'm going to clean up this gold base part. Um, when you pry it open with the box cutter, the gold sometimes gets indented um, on the inside of the part you don't see. God, that's really annoying that my neighbors won't stop hammering on everything. So I use my heat gun. And if you apply the heat, and then you can use like the X-Acto knife to push it back in place, um, you won't see any of that on the top, but it makes space for the NFC coil inside. So I'm gonna do that right now. And actually, I can smell the plastic melting right now. So, um, so you have to be very careful not to overheat the plastic because you can warp the top very easily, full enough to move again. Um, and that's when you bend it and you stop heating. Um, if you go past that point pretty much at all, you might start getting um, a lot of uh, like marks on the plastic. So now that I've bent this back in place, there are little pieces of gold plastic on the inside and you just want to go in with your X-Acto blade and cut every single one of those off. Um, I slice them and then use pliers to pry them off. So in the case of Mega Man, where his feet stick into this gold base, you can see there's like a little piece right here and right here where his, the pegs for his feet stick in. That's how he's held in place. We're going to cut through those. Um, we actually don't need to cut, well actually we do need to cut through all of them. Um, some people will use their soldering iron um, and melt that plastic completely and just, I mean, it's pretty, it's very quick to do it that way. Um, it can mess up your soldering iron. Uh, well, not permanently, but it makes it messy. And then you have to clean it off, and I don't like having to deal with that. So I'd rather just uh, scrape it away using the X-Acto blade and the box cutter, um, which is what I'll do in this video. And I'm gonna do a sped up thing, so you guys don't have to watch for an hour and a half to get through this whole video. <laughs> Take the pliers, grab each of those little pegs, and they pop right out. Okay, 
so what I did just now is I pulled all these little gold pieces out, or the little pegs, um, to create space for the NFC coil that I'm going to create later. And then I have to scrape these out, so that's going to take a little bit of time, so warp speed, Captain. Okay, so I've got one of them done. And basically what I did is I just used the box cutter and the uh, exacto knife to shave it away slowly until I got it all the way through so there's a hole in the base of this now. And that's what my wires are going to end up running through. So when I put the foot back in, hope I can get it quickly this time, just like that. Yep, perfect. So the hole that I drilled in the boot lines up with the hole I made here in the base. And I also left room for the coil to run around. Now I've got to finish clearing out this side, which I will do off camera, and then we'll resume. I've now scraped away all the interior parts here. Um, so there are holes on both sides. Um, we only need the holes on one side where the boot is going to attach and what that will allow us to do is create an NFC coil, which is what powers the LED, and run the wires from the NFC coil up through the boot, through his leg, up through his torso, into his arm, and to the LED in the cannon. Teach you guys how to create an NFC coil. Um, they're pretty simple. Um, the concept. I don't know enough about electronics to fully explain it, but if I remember correctly from, what is it, like middle school science class, um, the concept is you are going to coil some wire, and it has to be uh, covered in coated wire, so you, it either needs to be covered in some sort of plastic or rubber, or in this case it's just like a fine plastic film enamel kind of thing. Um, and I have this bottle of prime sea camp stuff I've got an aquarium um, that I keep and this is the chlorinator essentially but this bottle happens to be the perfect size to fit um, just inside that clearing that I created in the bottom of this gold piece and so I use this to create my coil so it's nice and neat. You actually don't want it too neat or you'll create an NFC choke um, so I usually do any number of wraps around this bottle. Um, I'm going to do 10 this time. That's pretty typical, but uh, you can do more. We'll create more power, but after a certain point, um, you create that choke and it doesn't power it as well, and you get flickering rather than a constant uh, beam of light. Clip the wire. I've got my coil, and I've got the two ends. And I want to keep them pretty much equally long. And I just twist the wire together so the coil doesn't come undone. And we'll leave that for now on the bottle because if you pull it off, it could become uncoiled. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, pull out two lengths of wire that run from the length from where I'm going to have the LED all the way, with a little bit of extra, all the way down through the boot into the base. So I measured it out approximately, cut my length of wire, and then I'm going to cut a second one. Done that. I've got my two lengths of wire, and actually what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to twist them together. This might take a while. So I'll speed up the video. I've twisted the wire pretty much the entire length. I left the ends um, loose at one end. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the wire up through the torso from his shoulder down. Um, sometimes you'll need to run like a piece of string and tie it to the wire and then pull it through. Sometimes I'm able to just push it. Uh-oh. Maybe try it the other way. There we go. And the wire's through. 
And just to make sure I have it pulled far enough through, go ahead and put the boot on and put the wire in the, through the base. Make sure that the wire is all the way through. And I've got enough left in the base that I can attach it to that coil later. And so basically it's going to look something like this. Um, actually, I'm going to give a little bit more, more in the base. All right, so here's the fun part. Um, technically, I could go ahead and glue this together, put the leg and the cannon on. What I'm going to do next is get my LED out. Um, I am going to try to use a 5 millimeter first, but I don't think it's going to fit. Nope, doesn't fit. Big surprise there. And but by big surprise, I mean that's no surprise whatsoever. Um, I've got a small, this is a, this one that's green, low intensity bulb rather than a high intensity bulb. You want it to fit snugly inside, and that's what it does. And the high intensity bulbs are clear. Um, for the ones I got, I ordered them off Amazon. Um, you can go to Radio Shack and buy them. A lot of hobby stores carry them. Um, but this is a three millimeter high intensity green LED. Okay, I've zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see what's going on a little better. Hopefully this makes the video a little better. So, recap what we've done so far. We drilled the holes through the boot, cannon, and torso and shoulder of Mega Man. Um, and then we got rid of all the little gold pegs inside of this piece here. And I scraped away until uh, the parts where his boot fits into um, were exposed so that there was a hole going from the base to the boot. So you could put the NFC coil in here. We made our NFC coil, which is on this bottle here. Right. And I ran the wire that we're going to use from, or through Mega Man's torso. So, now that this is here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna untwist that uh, wire that I twisted up before, just a little bit, and I need to scrape that enamel off. Um, Originally, I used sandpaper. Um, you can use sandpaper. Wire strippers are too thick to do this with, or they don't. They can't handle wire this small. So I'm scraping the enamel off of the wire. All right. So there's one side of the wire down. Let's do the other. All right. So that's now that that's done. We're going to connect it to our LED. Just remember. So we also need shrink tubing, which I have sitting right here. So I bought a big thing of shrink tubing. Uh, this shrinks down to, I believe, one, yeah, one eighth inch. Um, that's about as small as I could find. I'd like to have it even smaller, um, like one sixteenth inch would be ideal. Um, but I could not find that. And I'm gonna put that on one of the sides. There's no need to do both. You're just trying to prevent a short, um, which basically makes it so the LED doesn't work. And you're going to Coil. I use the tweezers from the uh, phone repair kit for this. You're going to use the tweezers. You're going to wrap the wire around the contact for the LED and a coil, and a loose coil. You don't want the wire like touching, touching, touching itself. What, the first Amiglos that I made, um, that was pretty much all I did. I didn't bother to solder it. My soldering skills were practically non-existent when I started doing this. And so as a result my work, it worked fine. I got a few complaints of people saying their figures stopped working, um, things like that. Um, and what I did to keep the wire connected was I actually just super glued it. It's not exactly the most effective thing, but it worked. Um, <coughs> this is a battery powered Weller soldering iron with a pretty basic tip on it. Um, it's got a low and a high setting. I typically try to use the low if I can. Let that warm up for a second. And then we're going to solder the wire onto the contact for the LED. And I use the heat gun to shrink the shrink tubing over the top. So, sped up version begins now. So that one side is now soldered, and I'm going to use my wire cutters to 
cut off the excess for the contact on the LED. Use the heat gun. Shrink the shrink tubing, squeeze it so it's tight, and basically adhere to itself. And now I'll wrap the other side. We're going to twist the wire around the other contact. While we're waiting on that to heat up, go ahead and cut off this contact far enough down that you don't have to worry about it. There we go. Put a little fresh solder on the soldering iron. And there we go. That's soldered. That'll cool it just a little. Then we will twist it back together and push the two contacts in so they're kind of on top of each other a little bit so it's a little better pushed together. And before we do anything else, oh, I need to scrape the other two ends. And then we're going to test it to make sure the light turns on. We didn't burn out the LED. So, got those wires stripped. I've got a test coil here that I've made before, and I use it to test most of my <clears throat> figures before I send them off and flip and finish installing. So, just connect the wires, make sure they're not touching, and I don't have my phone to test it with, so I will be right back got my phone so I use my phone to test it um, rather than a 3DS or a gamepad um, I've got an NFC capable phone I have a Sony uh, Xperia Z2 I know a lot of people that have uh, most Samsung products nowadays um, are able to do NFC so turn on the phone make sure they're in contact and you probably see it flashing green so that's because the contact is not particularly good on this. Um, once you install the NFC or the LED into the phone and all that, it looks fine and it stays on, should stay on. Um, when you scan on a gamepad or a 3DS, it flickers um, because it doesn't send a constant signal like the phone does. The phone is just a constant signal, whereas the um, gamepad and 3DSs are not constant. It's just like a quick oh okay so there's something there and it's done um, if you leave it sitting on top of it it'll keep flashing but if you want it to stay on you have to put it on like a phone or something like that so now we know the LED works we're good keep moving forward so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to insert the LED inside the cannon I moved the contacts in the wrong direction slightly so I've got to bend them back so that they're not as in the way. That's probably the best way to put it. So we've got that. Now I'm pushing the LED into place. Push the light so it's in the cannon and all the way out to the other side. And now because I was pushing on the wire I'm going to test it again because I don't want it to want it to assemble it and have it not work. And there it is, still working. Good. Okay. Around the LED inside the gun. And just lay it down, let that dry for a minute. Well, not even a minute, it's a few seconds. There's really about 10 seconds is how long this type of super glue takes to dry. So that's done. And um, this one, I'm going to have the. I'm going to just take that super glue again. And dab it around the edges of his arm. And 
and put it together. And the wire through his leg now, because his arm is reattached and pretty much complete. I'll probably heat this up and bend it down so it's not pointing so far up. Um, but that's something I'll do in a little bit. So, if you remember I trimmed off his leg before so it was flat and it's a little shorter and now it fits back inside the boot perfectly and it's exposed the exact same amount as on the other side. Now, so what's kind of important about this one is that if you put the boot on before putting the boot inside the stand you might put it at the wrong angle and you definitely don't want to do that. Um, it's kind of a pain to fix because you have to rip apart something that's been super glued together which is not particularly hard but it's enough of a pain that you don't want to have to deal with it. So, we're going to go ahead and reinstall him into the stand without any glue first. And then our first step is going to be to glue his leg back to the boot. So, I've got him pulled out of the boot slightly so I can put the super glue on his leg, but the boot is in place. Put my super glue, push it down in, and it already had started drying because you heard that little click there. And we leave it sitting for a few seconds while it dries. The next thing, once that finishes drying, is I'm going to pull the boot out of the base on both sides, put a little glue in the base, and uh, put the boots and uh, put the boots back into the base. And then we're almost done. We just got to add the NFC coil, install it in the base here, which actually we can go ahead and do. So I'm going to go ahead and take the NFC coil off this bottle and see if you let it go, it kind of uncoils itself a little bit. That's okay. You actually want it to uncoil a little bit, be a little messy, not too messy though. And basically we can kind of lay it in there and you can see where it's going to sit. But we, what we are going to do is we're going to take a little bit of that heat shrink tubing that we used before, another piece, and we're going to put that on the wire coming out of his foot. And then we're going to connect. We're just going to twist these together. We don't have to solder these at all. Um, you can if you really want to. I don't usually bother. I don't see the point. Um, because when you twist it together, the connection is pretty strong. And when you're doing a one LED figure, it does not matter which um, which contact goes to which. If you're doing a two LED or more figure, it does matter, so that gets a little bit more complicated. You now let's go, go ahead and do the one that's not going to have the, the heat shrink to me. So, twist it together. There's that one. Put the heat shrink tubing on the other one. All right. So I've got it inside the heat shrink tubing. Heat that up. and then squeeze that so you make sure that filament's covered. And then we should test it before we install it, just like we did before. And it works. So, remember we didn't glue this back down to the base, so let's do that. Pull both feet out from the, from the gold part. And let's put some glue on the base of his feet. and quickly push the feet down into the base. So now they're in. You can see where the feet hang over the edge of the gold. That's where we did our prying before. So now that won't be visible. And just to be sure they're in there nice and tight, you can drop a few drops of super glue through the base onto those 
boots to make sure that it stays in there and it doesn't come out. So one thing you do kind of need to be careful about is this coil, it's, you know, it's just uh, wire, so it can it kind of get too loose and so it won't fit inside the base if you let it uncoil too much. So you gotta keep make sure you don't let it do that. So we're gonna put that wire that's coming from the figure, start wrapping it in a circle around like so. I said like so. And then you install the coil. Alright, so once the coil is installed, you want to make sure it works for sure. And there we go. Still working. And we're almost done. All you've got to do is install that NFC chip back in. Got a lot of super glue in my hands, apparently. And before I glue it, I want to make sure this is going to fit in there properly. Now, see, what I'm running into is part of the coil was keeping it from going down all the way. So, I'm going to make sure that's out of the way. Shave off a little bit of the plastic over here. So, I'm just going to shave it just a little so that this whole thing will fit back inside the base properly. So let's test it again. Ah, I forgot something, actually. So where we put the box cutter in to pop this open earlier, you have to heat up this base very carefully. And bend that black plastic that got scuffed up. You gotta bend it so it's back in place. Because if you don't, nothing fits quite right. Also, um, be careful not to overheat this base or it'll get this really weird glossy look to it. Alright, now that that's smooth again, again, let's test it. Make sure it's working and fits in there much better. Now it fits perfectly. Make sure it's still working. Notice how it made that noise when it was reading. It's trying to read the NFC chip now. But we have a working solid green LED and that means all that's left now is to take our super glue and I put it dabs basically all the way around. You can use as much or as little as you want. I tend to use quite a bit because I don't want that figure popping off if you drop it. Um, if you drop it, it does avoid the guarantee that the figures will work. Alright, now flip it shake it up make sure you're providing pressure to keep the base together the way you want it to be Oops. and we are done now we have a working green LED Mega Man phones on And there we go, he's working. And then otherwise, he looks pretty much identical to when we started. So it took a little hiatus to photograph uh, this Mega Man and the one I keep with the purple. Um, got an idea in mind for a nice collage. Anyway, so I pulled this back out. We're gonna put Mega Man back inside. And if you remember, I pulled the little uh, lead thing that they have on the base that doesn't let it scan so that it will scan through the box if the person chooses to keep it inside the box. So uh, normally I would put 
an Amiglo's logo right there that just kind of sits over top of that, um, but I'm not going to bother with that this time. And we're going to work on putting this back inside, like so. All right. And he's reboxed, and we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so we got the Elmer's glue, and make sure the top is not clogged like mine is. Problem solved. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up and put glue. Not much. It really doesn't take a lot to overdo it. And I just run a line from the top all the way down to the bottom. Put it down. Make sure everything lines up as best as I can get it to. And there's one side. Now let's do the other. And it's okay if a little glue gets inside the packaging because um, Elmer's dries clear. One of the best things about it. And there we go. It's repackaged. Clean up that glue. And it's really that simple. You just gotta be conscientious in how you open the box. It looks like I need to add a little bit of extra glue at this point right here. All right. I'll put a little bit of weight on that so it'll dry. Um, that's not enough weight. There we go. Put the pliers and we'll leave that to dry. And tomorrow morning I'll package it up and ship it out. And there you have it. The green Mega Man Amiibo. Now let's see if he scans and powers while still in the box. Does not look like he's close enough to scan. So, there we go. Mega Man's all done. And you've got an Amiglo. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.